for those students. Now that we've covered wild and do wild loops, it's time to explore the for loop. Another essential control flow statement in Java. The for loop is often used when you know in advance how many times you want to execute a statement or a block a statement. So the traditional for loop. The traditional for loop is one of the most commonly used loops in programming. It is especially useful when you need to execute a code, code when you need to execute a block of code a specific number of times. In Java, let's take a look at the syntax. We have four, keyword four. And in parentheses, we have three steps. The initialization step. So a variable to initialize that will then be checked for a condition and updated. Or actually, you could just initialize whatever you want in here. It's going to be used within the whole loop. And you and then the condition. The condition is going to be what allows you to know that for loop gets away. And update. So how uh, gets updated so that you can keep going or you eventually will stop going. Okay. And then make sure you're in curly brackets, you put the codes to be executed. All right. So the, initializ the initialization, the step is executed first and only once. It allows you to declare and initialize any loop control variables. The condition. This expression is evaluated before each iteration. If the control, if the condition is true, the loop body is executed. If the condition is false, the loop terminates. Update. This step is executed after each iteration of the loop body. It typically increments or decrements. Do minus minus if you want. The loop control variable. So you don't have to do plus plus minus minus. You can do plus equals two. You can update by two or whatever you want. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Example. Four. It's i equals one. So we're saying i, initializing i to be one. While i is less than or equal to five, we will update i plus it, updating it by one or incrementing it by one. We're going to just just an out that print line and it counts. So we're going to be counting out what it is. Or So we started at one, then we go to two because we updated, then we go to three, then four, then five. Uh, then we go up, data at six, and six is not less than or equal to five, so we don't do anything after that. We're done with it. So this example, the initialization is i, and we get to i, excuse me, equals one. The condition is i is less than or equal to five, and the update is i plus plus. The loop prints counts one to count five. So let's look at another type. A enhanced for loop or an advanced for loop, sometimes called a for each loop. The enhanced for loop, also known as the for each loop, is used to iterate over arrays or collections. It simplifies the syntax and eliminates the need for explicit loop control variables. Let's take a look at the syntax. Four, and in parentheses, you have your data type and the variable that it goes with, and it, it, uh, colon, then the collection that you're going across. So if it was a collection of string variables, so like a, a string array, the data type will be string, and the variable will be whatever it is. Or if it was a collection of integers from an integer array, uh, then you would, data type will be integer, and the variable that you're going to use. That's what, for each one of those things in here. And then you, inside of curly bracket still, we have a code that will be repeatedly executed. So data type, the type of elements in the collection. The variable, the variable that holds each each element of the condition during the iterations. And the collection, the array or the collection to iterate over. So examples. Here's an example of using the enhanced for loop to iterate over an array of numbers. <laughs> Yeah, so we got an integer array of numbers. Numbers one, two, three, four, and five. So we've initialized it here. And four, it's num in numbers. So this type, the data type we have that's in this array here. And this is the variable we're going to save each thing to be. 
we're going to print out each number. So the first thing, num's going to be one, then num's going to be two, then num's going to be three, then num's going to be four, then num's going to be five. And there's nothing else in here, so I'm done. That's how those work out. All right. In this example, the loop iterates over the numbers array to print each element. So let's compare the for loops. Traditional for loops versus the enhanced for loop. Well, the traditional for loop is more flexible. It can use any logic for the initialization, condition, and update. It is suitable for cases where you need to manipulate the loop control variable within the loop body. The enhanced for loop is simplified syntax and read only access to each element in the collection. And it's ideal for iterating over arrays and collections when you don't need to modify the elements. Why are we telling it how to access it? You just read it. Just read it. That's all the access that we need. We need to go get it, put it in somewhere, do something with it, update, go get the next one. We don't need to do that. Okay? So let's look at some practical examples. Let's use uh, a traditional formula to iterate over an array. So let's get our uh, names again. Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Let's go get those guys. Let's go get those guys. So we got uh, our string names. String, uh, string array names. Alice, Bob, and Charlie. And four. We're going to set our index, or i, to be at zero. That's our initialization set. While i is less than the length of names, so i is less than three, we'll keep updating i. And we'll do the following. We'll do system.out.lines. We'll print the name. And then we will print the name that is in names at that index. So that's why we're starting at zero, because our index value started at zero. Unless we get updated, we become one. Updated, become two. Updated, become three. And three is not less than three, so we'll be done. Oh, there we go. Name Alice, name Bob, name Charlie. So we got all three of them. It's like, great. Yeah. So now let's do it using an enhanced for loop to iterate over an array. So we'll do the same thing. Let's see how it structures. Just get this thing. So, same thing as before. Actually, either real. All right, so four. We got our string name. The string is the data type of the uh, array here, names. And we're going to call, we're going to have a variable name to save each uh, element that's, that we're using, or each element of it. And we're going to read only access to the pull out. We're just going to put it on. So we did four. Got All right, cool. So there's something I want to demonstrate here. So let's execute that. Oh, I want to finish like that actually. Yeah. So let's execute that. You know how much time that takes? So let's do it again. How much time that takes? Do it one more time. Okay. Not bad. Okay. This time. Let's do this. Okay. Do this like kind of out average. Gonna take a little longer. Okay. All right. So let's also iterate over collections. So uh, let's use a traditional loop. For loop to iterate over a list, like an array list. Okay, let's do that. All right, so. What is utilizes? Cool. So we're going to create an array list, a string array list. It's not going to work as with the string. We're going to call it names. Ooh. And it's going to be a new array list. So we are going to uh, initialize it here. Or actually, I guess we are uh, creating it. We're currently creating it there. And then we're going to add to it add, uh, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Okay? And then 
four. I zero. So initializing the ID is zero. That's it. That's what it is. While that's less than while that's less than excuse me, the main size, the size of the list is three. So while I is less than three, we're gonna update it by one. We're gonna increment it by one. Okay, so starting at zero, we're gonna go get each L each element at its index of main, starting from zero, and then one, and then two. And we won't do three because three is not less than two. That's so cute. Yay. Now let's see how we do that using an enhance for loop to iterate over this list. So we just okay. So that's what for enhance for loop. We have our data type. We have the variable we're gonna to use to hold each uh, read only access value that we get uh, from this collection over here. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. Cool. All right. What about nested for loops, huh? Yes. Sometimes you need to use a loop inside of a loop. And this is known as a nested loop. So let's look at an example. So you want to print the multiplication table using nested for loops. So for i equals one, um, so initialization. And while i is less than or equal to five, so we go so we get to five, we increment by one. For each of those, we're gonna do a j equal to one. So we can get this up to some columns here. Um, we're gonna do one until it gets to five, and we're gonna increment j. So first off, i is one, and we're gonna print out what one times one is. Then we're gonna tab it over, then one times two, we tab it over, one times three, tab it over, one times four, tab it over, one times five, tab it over. Five is not less than or equal to five, so we're gonna get out of that loop and go back up here. So I gets incremented to two. Then we're gonna have go back in and then two uh, have the four loop again. J starts over at one again, so two times one is two, we're gonna keep going, and print all it out each time on the new line. Let's get X is not out that purple line. Yay, we made a multiplication table. Yay. All right, in this example, the outer loop runs from one to five. And for each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop also runs from one to five, uh, printing the product of i and j. So to summarize, a traditional for loop is flexible and suitable for cases where you need more control over the loop variable. Enhanced for loops are simplified syntax and ideal for iterating over arrays and collections without modifying the element. And nested for loops are useful for multidimensional data, such as bringing a matrix or a table. With these insights, you should be well equipped to use for loops in your Java programs effectively. Keep practicing, and you'll master these loops in no time. Oh, happy coding, bon appetit. I'm just going loop crazy. Can't help it. It's your fault. Have a sh You've been wondering why I'm hot about this because of the sugar. Because I think you're loops. 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 That's. Oh. So glad we're going to move away from this. But anyway, what happens to you?